Good morning. Spring is here in the Southern Hemisphere. It's an exciting time. We've got lots of honey pouring in. We've been taking splits, which is the thing you should do to stop your hives from swarming in the springtime. There's all sorts of spring management you can do, but my favorite is to take your splits. That way if you don't want another hive, somebody else surely will, and you get to increase the size of your apiary. Now, while we're here, we're gonna tap a bit of honey from this top box here because I can see they're filling up really nicely. And I don't want them to swarm and taking some honey out of the top is a great thing to do because what that does is it allows them to move honey up from their brood chamber here, make some space down there for eggs and that way the bees are less likely to swarm. So it's one of the minor triggers that helps. So I'm choosing some frames here. If you have a look, this is an interesting, one of the questions we often get asked is when is my honey ready to harvest? Now you can see here, this one is nice and full. They've tapped it all the way down the edge. They've put their capping on top to say the moisture content is low enough. They're putting the capping on like a lid on a preserving jar so it'll keep for later. Lucky for us, they store more than they need often and we can share some too. If you have a look in the side window, you can see beneath their feet, give us a thumbs up if you can see the capping beneath their feet. It's the white wax, which is the fresh wax they've made, virgin wax, which they'll be making when there's an abundance of nectar around for them to turn into wax. So when they're recycling it, it'll be more brown in color, or if it's had lots of bee footprints over it, it'll be browner in color also. So beautiful, all we need to do now is take this little key access cover out of the top, take the uh, caps out, put them down there so we know where they are, and then we're going to turn the key and uh, start with this one. And I wonder how hard it is to turn. Often we do it in segments, but that one was easy enough to do just in one go, just like that. But if it is a bit hard, just do it a bit at a time. And look at that, you can already see honey starting to move and pour down the tube here. Yum, look at that. Golden honey of the springtime. If you've got questions, put it in the comments below. Beej is going to read those out and I'll do my best to answer them. If you've got good answers for people's questions, then chime in, share what you do. Also let us know whereabouts in the world you are tuning in from. It's really interesting to us. We've got now Flow Hive beekeepers in 130 different countries. It's an amazing global community, all helping each other. It's such a, an amazing uh, thing. We have someone saying good night from Argentina. Good night from Argentina. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Here we are, harvesting honey in the sunshine while others are putting their kids to bed. Okay. Let's harvest this one as well. And we should see some honey coming down here shortly. And also see what's happening here, where right beneath their feet, the honey started to drain out. Some of the bees have noticed, some haven't. But uh, what we'll see is a different colored honey coming out, showing us that the bees were filling this frame at a different time to this one. So we've got some lighter colour here, which is representative of the spring flavours. We've got a bit of privet in there, which is actually a weed, but the bees don't see it as a weed. They see it as flowers full of nectar, ready to harvest. Yeah. So we're going to be inspecting some splits live today. So we're going to go down and pull some hives apart so you get to see inside at what's going on. But what I'm going to do is cover up these jars because I don't want the bees to come and pile in here while we're busy somewhere else. If you see bees going for the honey, just cover it up with some kitchen wrap or in this case, it's a bit of wax wrap. But wow, look at that golden color. It's just mesmerizing to watch. Look how fast we've already got a, we've already got one and a half kilograms of honey in this jar. These jars will hold about three kilograms, which is about a frame worth. So you get 18 kilograms if you harvest them all, which is such an incredible amount of honey. The Apis mellifera is just an extraordinary species that we're intertwined with now. Pollination 
is uh, is all tangled up with this species now. So if we don't have enough bees, we don't have enough pollination. So more important than ever to be a beekeeper. Any questions coming in? Yeah, we have some questions from Instagram. Um, one of the questions is, how's that, how does it work in hot weather? I live in the desert. So this species is absolutely incredible. They can survive in desert conditions, snow conditions, tropical conditions and bees uh, everywhere all over the world so you'll find you'll get some amazing and very thick honey usually in the desert areas. I've tasted, tasted some honey from the desert areas here in Australia and it's so different to what we get here so it's one of the amazing things about beekeeping is every different area has different flavours of honey as the bees are foraging on different things. But chime in if you're in a more arid area in a hot desert area and uh, let us know what it's like beekeeping where you are. Put your questions in the comments we'll get to answering those. We're going to now go down and inspect some hives that we've, we've taken splits from these hives here and we're going to have a look and see how they're going. Okay I'm going to do my bee veil up because uh, as we take the roof off these hives they might be wanting to sting me on the nose like I'm some kind of mammal, which I am, a bear intruding uh, and they get a bit territorial. We use a smoker just to calm them down a little bit so let's get this smoker going. I'm going to smoke my hands to mask my smell and hopefully they won't sting my hands but if you're new to beekeeping wear your gloves and make sure you're protecting yourself and having a nice gentle start to your beekeeping. So let's have a look at this one first. We're just going to blow a little bit of smoke in the entrance and um, then we're just going to pull a few frames out here for you to have a look at. Aha, so this was a little swarm we caught actually. We had a look at this one last week and um, so this wasn't one of the splits and we can have a look and see how they're going here. They're actually a, a little bit, uh, I could have waited a bit longer. Notice that they're a little bit uh, grumpy about me taking the roof off. But they're not seeing me so that's nice. We might just give them a little bit of time to settle down as we go on to the next one. Okay. Now the question is, can you harvest wax from the flow frames? You can harvest wax from the flow hive because down the bottom it's just the same as it's always been. Have a look here, they're just making wax in a wooden frame. So if you want to get in here and pull out a few frames of honey from the edge, typically they put honey on the edge, you can then uh, save that wax to make some candles with or whatever you like. And the flow frames, however, they recycle the wax around and around. And you don't tend to harvest any wax from them. You can also store honey under the roof. Uh, you can also collect honeycomb under the roof cavity if you want to collect a bit of honeycomb up here under the roof. And what that means is you can then use that wax. The inner covers um, come with it here. There we go. So here we can uh, take out this plug and it's nice to confine them to a little uh, area here with perhaps a, a Pyrex uh, baking dish would be a nice thing to turn upside down on there and then you can watch them build honeycomb in this area. Or you can let them build honeycomb in this roof cavity and you'll get a lot of it but uh, after a while you might wish you confined them to a small area because as you take the roof off it gets a bit messy breaking lots of comb under the roof. So you just pop that cap out, confine them to a space and I've built some honeycomb up there which you can use for enjoying and keeping the wax also. Okay let's just have a quick look at what they're doing. This swarm looks like they may be queenless to me. The way they're behaving 
they seem like they were queenless. We made an attempt to rectify that by putting in a couple of frames and there was last week some queen cells. Look at that beautiful honey there. Nice. There's actually not many bees in here, so uh, I suspect that they may not have a queen. I'm going to lift up this frame here and see if there's any eggs or any sign of a queen yet. There was queen cells recently. All of those look like they're full of honey. We may have a virgin queen because there was a couple of queen cells. Oh, and look at this. This is interesting. Not one, but three queens have emerged into this hive. So they'll be fighting it out to see who becomes the egg layer of the hive. Uh, but you can tell by the way that queen cell there is torn at the edges. If it was neat on the edges, they would be preparing to raise a queen. If it's torn on the edges, it means one's actually emerged recently. So if we have a quick look, we might even find a queen or two in here. Let's have a look. I'm not seeing one though. Sometimes they, you get bad luck and they go on a mating flight and don't actually make it home again. Uh, somebody asked that question recently. Do they, does the queen do an orientation flight? And let's hope she did so she can make it back to this hive. The orientation flight is where the, the bees for their first flight come and they do a bunch of kind of buzzy circles around as they take in landmarks and really learn exactly where the hive is. And it's amazing how accurate they can be. Okay, any more questions coming in? Yeah, we have a question from Jocelyn on the Facebook Live. She says, when I opened my hive recently to check how full the frames were, the bees had built a lot of honeycomb all over the outside of the frames. Is this usual? Why did they do this when the frames were only 50% full? She's from Narrabri in New South Wales. Okay, over the outside of the frames. Narrabri, I know Narrabri. I've landed there in my uh, paraglider a few times. Um, now, I'm just not 100% sure on your question, so if you could uh, let us know whether that's in the brood box here or with the flow frames. So it sounds like they've built some comb on the outside, but they didn't fill the centre. Um, if that was the case, if they're building comb up here and around there, but they didn't fill the centre, um, let me know whether they actually filled these cells with honey or whether they were just building cells for when the honey starts flowing. Okay, no sign of a queen on this hive. Um, let's have a look. Here, we've got honey, honey, honey. Can't see any eggs down the cells. Looking for tiny little grains of rice down the bottom. Can't see them. I'll have a good look on this side too. Sometimes you just need to hold it up to the right angle to see the little eggs down there. Not seeing any sign of eggs or any queen. So it's possible that this little swarm we caught is now queenless again. We tried to rectify the situation by putting a frame of honey in a frame of brood, but it looks like it may not have worked despite them raising three queen cells. So sometimes you've just got to give up on trying to get a colony what's called queen right. So what we could do is just merge these bees with another colony. And that way we save some of these resources. Uh, and you can do that by putting the hive on top of another one with a newspaper. Um, between just a couple of sheets of newspaper, poke some holes in it so there's ventilation and the bees will slowly chew the newspaper away and then the colonies will be mixed in a nice slow fashion. You get less fighting because the pheromones will just slowly mix together. What have we got here? A little queen cup. We have an interesting question about queens here. 
This person's asking, is it okay to have two queens in two separate brood boxes in one hive? Yes, you can. And beekeepers will often purposefully uh, engineer it to be so. So sometimes they'll go for what's called a two queen hive where you'll have a queen down here in the bottom box and you'll put a queen excluder. You'll have one or two honey supers in between then another brood box on top uh, separated by another queen excluder and that way the queen's pheromones are far enough apart they can both lay eggs, both uh, contribute to new bees in the hive and you've got a little bit of redundancy queen dies, then the other queen will keep laying and the hive will keep going. So um, not many people do that, but some people in commercial apiaries will do that so they can get uh, more honey out of a single hive. They'll run a double queen hive. And you can also get into the situation where they have two queens temporarily in a hive. So uh, a a, a, if a new queen emerges, she'll make a piping noise and go around and sting other queen cells, so she's the only one. But sometimes you get into the situation where there will be a queen that's been raised and you'll have a couple of queens in a hive temporarily, um, but eventually there'll be one. It, it, perhaps the hive swarms or perhaps the um, one queen gets killed and the other queen will um, remain. So it, it, it's not uncommon to see, to be in the hive at that time when you've got more than one queen visible in a single box also. Okay, so we need to uh, mark this one down as queenless and, and what we could do is try once more to prop up this colony by introducing a frame from another hive with eggs on it. So let's see if any of these other hives have a frame with eggs on it we can put into this hive and save it. Okay. Might just top up this smoker here just to make sure it's going to keep going. Bearing in mind it's very hot. We don't want to um, burn ourselves. Grab the caddy here with all my bits and pieces and it's, it's just been raining here so I'm not worried about fire but if you are in a fire prone area or time of year then make sure you put this down on say a metal garbage bin lid and um, that will limit any fire issues. Okay. I'm stuffing that nice and full. So we might be here a little while, expecting hives. And close that up. Okay. Get it going again. There we go. You want nice bellows of cool smoke. If you've got flames coming out, don't use it on the bees that burn their wings. You want, you want nice cool bellows of smoke. I'm going to leave that out the front. Just as it gets going, the wafts of smoke will give the returning bees the scent and snap them into a different mode, being less aggressive, which is handy for me. So we're just chiseling off the cover. So look at this one, it's absolutely pumping, right? Um, this was a split, but a merge of two splits. So rather than have more colonies, we decided to beef this one up with frames from a couple of different hives. So this uh, very quickly becomes full of bees and ready for the honey super, ready to catch the springtime. So that's a technique you can do when you're taking splits from multiple hives, is you can decide to, uh, to conglomerate a, two, a couple of splits together and get faster action in the honey season. It's important to take splits in springtime because that will be your major stopper for swarming. And we really don't want our bees to swarm because you lose half the bees. 
and in uh, New South Wales case we um, could be spreading varroa mites so really important not to um, let your hive swarm if you can all help it sometimes you do everything right but they still swarm if they do swarm then best to, to catch them and give them a box okay any more questions coming in yeah Clinton has an interesting question um, they just bought a new flow hive and picked up a nuke a few days ago. Transfer went well. The five nuke frames were made from black plastic foundation. How can I change to foundationless frames or should I? Uh, look, it's up to you. You don't have to change them, but over time you could cycle them out. So it doesn't matter if the bees have built onto them, they'll make them their own and, and you can just use them as they are. Often hives are a bit of a mix because as you say you've started with a nuke and the breeder used plastic foundation. You can then uh, over time um, move those frames out towards the edge of the hive. They will generally put honey on the edges so then you can take that frame away when it's only honey and there's no brood left in it. Replace it with a foundationless one if you wish to do so. We have another question from Alan. The flow frames are leaking from the capping um, when draining and there's honey in the bottom box. So perhaps we should go back and have a look at the honey we're harvesting up here to answer that one. Let's get this smoker going. So depending on how the bees have capped the cells and there's a whole lot of factors which will determine whether honey spills or not when you're harvesting. This is the frame we're harvesting here. As you can see, this one didn't spill a whole lot. I did see one little, little dribble coming down. But you can imagine if you have a, uh, a higher viscosity honey low down compared to up top, then it's trying to drain down, but you've got a head of pressure and it might spill out. So it's one of the reasons it can spill out. Another one is when you finish harvesting, wow, these are just about ready to finish harvesting. Far out, that is amazing. We just started this at the start of our live Q&A and we are almost overflowing here. It's gorgeous. Look at that beautiful honey. So um, you can get into a situation, let's say I turn this off, which I should now. Um, I'm going to put it all the way in like this. And let's say I just did a quick close and moved on to the next frame. Now that, what that can do is allow the parts to bounce back up. So if you can, put the key in when you close and leave it that way for a minute or more. And that way all of the parts will seat back down into their correct position. If they don't, it can be the cause of some spills later because if you imagine the parts are up and they came down but didn't quite seat back down to there, then the bees are going to build a whole lot of wax in here, which will block the honey flow next time. So that's one thing we've learned over time. We've also learned that sometimes you'll get spills in the hive and sometimes you won't. As a conventional beekeeper, for years I'd be taking off the lids and spilling lots of honey into the hive. So I never thought it's, uh, it's to be an issue. Now, you'd take the, the lids off, it'd be full of honeycomb, you'd break all that, honey would be flowing down through the hive and even out the front sometimes, and uh, the bees would just clean that all up. So the bees will clean it all up. If you find it's causing you problems, then just harvest less frames at once. So just harvest two or three instead of going for the whole lot, and then you'll quarantine the spills to being less. Another one to think about is the slope of the hive. So we've put these levels in because we found people were harvesting when the hive wasn't on the correct slope. So you want that level bubble in the middle. That gives you that three degree slope for harvesting your honey. Yum. Look at this beautiful honey. That is um, so nice. It's springtime here. We've got two different colours and two different flavours here. I'm going to uh, cut this one off, which does mean the remaining honey from here will go back into the hive. But as said, bees will clean that up really quickly in the hive and they'll actually redistribute that honey. With the flow hive too, we have the tray at the bottom, which if you do have excessive spills, then let us know, but you'll end up with a, a lot of honey in your tray. Bear in mind that 
um, even a cup full of honey uh, looks like a lot in your tray. So but if you're getting that tray overflowing with honey down here, then get in touch and we'll help you troubleshoot why that's happening. Another question is how long does it take for them to fill the super? So this is springtime here and you'll find that they'll fill it very quickly this time of year. In fact, we could harvest all of these frames and probably in two weeks they're full again, which is a really exciting time. But equally, you can go a whole season without any honey actually uh, being stored in your hive. So like any type of farming, you can have good seasons and bad seasons too. Uh, but you could expect to fill your super after um, allow you know several months for them to fill it but you, the recipe for them filling it fast is you've got lots of bees in your hive and a lot of flowers for them to get and that's when you get this amazing action like typically is in the springtime but these will probably be full again by next week and another question is, what are the pros and cons of the six and seven frame hives? So the uh, difference is just this one more flow frame in the top and two more brood frames down the bottom. So on the pros, the six frame, which is this one, is a little bit lighter. You've got a little bit less weight when you're lifting off the super, which can be quite helpful when you're doing your brood inspections. The seven frame, the advantage of that is you store more honey in the hive and there's two more brood frames for your colony to get bigger. So the seven frames tend to be more popular in the colder regions where they just want a bit more storage of honey and a bit of a bigger colony to help survive the long winter ahead. So. If you're in the colder regions, you can also go the six frame or it matches the eight frame Langstroth, or you can go the seven. But my preference is to go the, uh, the smaller size, the Flow 6, just because it's a bit lighter to lift the honey box off. Beautiful. Another question is, can you, harvesting too much of the honeycomb, can that damage the hive? Uh, the answer is yes, if the bees are hungry, but if the bees are hungry, there's probably not going to be much full honeycomb for you to harvest. So if you're harvesting honeycomb from the bottom box here, then go ahead and take a couple of frames out if, if it looks like they've got a lot of honey. If it looks like they're hungry and they're eating cells away where they're they were capped but they're starting to uncap and eat, then don't harvest the honeycomb because the bees might need it for a time without flowers. After all, that's what they're saving it for. They're storing honey for when they might need it. And if you take too much honey away accidentally and there's a whole uh, time ahead without flowers, you may need to feed them to give them some stores to last through. Um, typically, that's the winter time here the time, it's actually late summer that has the least flowers for us. And in the uh, winter we get good flowers. It depends where you are in the world. But typically for a lot of people, it's the winter time. They need to make sure there's enough honey left in the hive for the bees to survive through to the next spring. We have a question about winter from Joey in East Texas. He says he'll be coming into winter in about a month. Can you supplement the bees with sugar water below 50 degrees? He heard that you can't. So if your bees are hungry, then feed them whether it's cold or not. Uh, you don't want your bees to starve. But as, as you said, it's better to feed them earlier when the temperature's warmer. And what they'll do is they'll store that sugar water as honey in the hive and that'll be what's called a thick syrup so two to one ratio two parts sugar one parts water and you'll cook that up till it's all dissolved let it cool and then put it in a feeder and there's lots of different ways to make feeders but you'll feed uh, that to the bees coming up to your your um, winter it's best to 
for them to have stores. So if they don't have stores, then feeding them prior to winter is a good way to get them to survive through to the next spring. If you've left it too late and it's getting cold, you can also do fondant feeding, which is um, like a, a thick toffee-like sugar. And you can just put that on the inner cover and let the bees come up and eat that. You can also um, feed dry sugar by just getting out some of the frames from the edge. If they're hungry, then they, 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 you, you might just be able to pour honey into the open cells of the edge frames of the hive. Sorry, pour sugar into the open cells and that's called dry sugar feeding. And the bees will then be able to chew away at that and they'll use condensation in the hive to help um, break down that sugar when they need it. So they'll use the condensation on the inside as their water source if they're totally bunkered down in deep snow. Maria Joes has a question. Um, they want to know if they can start with the standard model that doesn't have the honey collector, the flow frames, and then add it later. You can, so you can start with a gay conventional hive and add flow frames. We sell a super, which is just the top box here, to put onto a conventional hive. Having said that, there are some benefits to having our base with the screen bottom board and the levels and the adjustments to get it all right. Typically what you run into when you're just putting the super on a conventional hive if it doesn't have a screen bottom board, then you'll want it sloped uh, forward towards the entrance. So any water that blows in can flow off out and not pool in there. But that's the wrong way for harvesting. So you're going to have to come along before you harvest and chock up the front, which is a bit annoying. Um, so I'd recommend having our complete system, but by all means you can get our super and add it to a conventional hive also. Let's go back to our bees. We've got a few hives open still down here while we've been yapping away. And what we wanted to, to have a look at was uh, whether we had some eggs in a frame to give to this hive here. Give them one more go at getting going. It's a little tiny swarm we caught. They're struggling. They've built some comb, but we don't have enough resources for them to, to get on their feet. So let's have a look here. Looks like we've got some honey on the edges. I'm just using the smoke to clear the bees away. And now I'm going to lift up a frame here like this and see what's going on. Now I haven't put on our shelf brackets as a frame rest. So straight away, I'm looking down these cells, looking for any sign of lava down the cells. And it looks like we have some eggs, which is good. This could be a good frame to give them, actually. Let's have a look. Down the cells. can see little eggs like tiny grains of rice. So this could be a good one to give them and they'll turn one of them into a queen cell and hopefully get going again. I wouldn't mind a little bit of capped brood on there to, to beef up the colony. What I might do is check that there isn't a queen on here just by looking through the bees carefully. So I want to leave the queen behind in this colony because it's doing really well and we could put a super on that shortly. Checking for a queen. Can't see her there. If I mess that up and we did take the queen, all it would mean is uh, this hive would have to then make a, a new queen. So we're going to add this with the bees. Hopefully they won't fight and let's see if that will uh, pick up this colony. I'll put one little comb in between. There we go. Drop this in. And let's see if they can make a queen and get back on their feet. 
So bearing in mind when you do this, you are risky, risking sharing pathogens between one hive and another, which is a risk you take when you uh, prop up a colony like this or take splits. Okay, there we go. So I'm just pushing the frames close together so that the spacing is right. So I'm putting the excess space on either side and that way they'll build nice straight comb, hopefully, on these comb guides like they have been here. I'm gonna take this and give it back to this hive. And they probably won't miss it. They've got a lot of resources, a lot of bees here. And within probably a day or two, they would have drawn out that comb and be using it for egg laying. Okay, let's go and see what else is going on in this hive. Actually, we might leave that frame out, give us room to move. I'll just prop, prop it up here on the side and we can take the next frame out and have a look at it. Any more questions? Maria Jose wants to know how they can get in contact with someone that has a beehive using our methods. Okay, chime in on the thread, let us know whereabouts you are and you never know, there might be someone watching from your area. Um, yeah, there is a lot of uh, flow hives around the world now, so chances are there's one not too far away. You can go and have a look um, if they're willing. This is an interesting comb. What you've got is really large size cells over here, which typically they will use for raising drones, and then smaller cells down here, which is the, the worker brood size. And Robert is asking, saying on the YouTube thread, your frames look really clean. My bees have heavy propolis between them. I'm in the USA. This is my second year. Yeah, some hives will be severe on their propolis efforts and sometimes it'll be hard to get the hive apart because it's all connected with propolis. I've got quite a few hives like that. Um, it's not that much of a problem, you can work with that. Bees that use a lot of propolis actually are often quite healthy bees because propolis is a nice preservative and they'll put it everywhere and it'll help keep pathogens away. Another question is, how often do you have to inspect the brood box? So, it really does depend on where you are in the world. If you've got the varroa mite in your area, you'll need to be managing that and that will mean more intervention, more inspections. We are uh, here in Australia, we've still been in the golden age for the, for the last uh, 50 years without the varroa mite in our continent so we would go through and inspect all the hives at least a couple of times a year for uh, pathogens such as AFB or EFB but, and otherwise as needed so it's not as um, even if you have the varroa mite in your area you're going to be doing a lot of things in spring to, to manage that and uh, make sure your mite numbers are low in your hive because they can cause the death of your colony. Um, so you'll be inspecting a lot more in spring for spring management as well. So let's say you'll be, um, it, if you just put a swarm in a box for instance, then you might want to inspect quite often as they build out on naturally drawn comb, make sure they're building straight. So that might be each week or two, you have a little look and, and having a look what they're doing is a, is a wonderful thing to do. As time goes on, there'll be less of a requirement to get in there and have a look once you've got your honey super on and it may be months between when you get in there. So it's not uh, like other animals where you need to be there every day to close the gate or feed them. You can go away for months at a time and your bees are usually fine. Okay, this colony is uh, looking really good. As said, it was a split from a couple of hives 
conglomerated together. So that's why we have the numbers built up so quickly already. So I'm just going through, having a look in here. We've already ascertained that there, that there must be a queen in here because there was eggs down the cells. So we can just leave them be now. So how and long until you would add the super to this hive? Here's the queen. Oh. Just uh, in front of my thumb there. She often doesn't have stripes on her abdomen and her shiny back plate is usually worn the hairs off it and you notice she moves with bigger steps because she's got bigger legs. There she is. Awesome, she still looks a little bit thin. She's a new queen that this hive would have raised because it was a split. So we're away, we have a queen, we have eggs down the cells. This colony will be ready for a super shortly. I'm gonna put that straight back in. Don't wanna leave that on the ground for the queen to be orphaned from the hive. Do you have a question again? Yeah, that, the question was, when, when would you add a super to this, this hive? How, how would you tell it so was the, ready? The general rule of thumb for adding a super is when all the frames have been drawn out and there's a lot of bees in the box. So this hive here is ready for a super. So we could add that, perhaps we'll do that next week. And we've taken one frame out, which they would have filled in by next week. So the only caveat on that is if you've got a long winter coming, for instance, even though the bees might be ready for a super, you might decide not to add it because you know that they won't be able to fill much of it and you'll just need to take it off again. So if you've got a long time ahead with no flowers, then you might just leave them as they are without adding any more boxes. And that just helps them maintain that space. If you add a whole lot of extra boxes when there's a cold winter ahead, then what will happen is that it'll just be harder for them to maintain the temperature in the colony over the winter. So you'll probably end up taking them off again. We had a question about flowers on YouTube. Um, someone was asking, what type of flowers do you have around this area? So we're in the springtime, there's a lot of flowers going on here. The macadamia has just been flowering, which is in the cropping lands below. We've also got all of these understory weeds here. To bees, they're not weeds, they're flowers. And we've got Crofton weed, we've got privet. The privet has a, a good honey flow. And the goya is just about to flower, which has an amazing, very floral flavour. So I can't wait for that to be coming in. Also gets called wild quince, so a very aromatic flavour. But it's very exciting here in springtime because you've just got so many different things flowering, so many flavours coming in to enjoy. And one last question from Brendan on the Facebook Live. Um, can you add a super straight away when you add the bees? If you had a full box like this of bees, by all means, you could go and add the super. But if you're adding a whole lot of frames that are empty and the bees still need to work on them, draw out the wax, don't add your super yet. So it really depends how you've started. If you've started with a, with a full box, then yes, you could add the super straight away. If you're in a warm time, it won't matter too much if you add the super early. It's more in the colder times that you don't want to do that. Uh, so it'll just make it harder for them. Okay. And the other reason is, if you add the super too early, you'll probably be hassling us saying, why well, haven't got any honey yet? <laughs> Whereas uh, if, if they're ready for the super, then it'll be quicker for them to start working on the flow frames. Okay. Get these bees off the edge. They've been very well behaved this morning. Nice of them. And we'll just uh, brush any bees in. Look, I put my hand on a bunch of bees and they didn't even sting me. That's friendly. Often that's the time you get stung when you're 
learning about um, glovelet. Going without gloves is when you just put your hand on a bee or when you're just getting complacent. Okay, it goes on. We'll sweep those bees off. We don't want them stuck under the gabled roof. And pop that roof back on. Now, bearing in mind, we have been a bit lazy here. We we're quick to, quick to flip and haven't got around to painting this roof yet. Best to put a good quality house paint on both sides of your shingles and that will give you the best weather seal. Okay. So don't do as I'm doing. <laughs> We'll go back up and we'll have a little look at our honey and just go back on two fingers crossed they raise a queen and get going otherwise we'll be doing a merge with this little one so thanks a lot for tuning in it's always great to hear all of your questions and let us know what you'd like us to cover next time Look at that beautiful big jar of honey. As I was saying earlier, a tip, when you turn it off again by sliding the key in the top here, go all the way to the back till you feel a knock, turn it to a 90 and just leave it there for a minute or two. And that means all of the frame parts will be pushed back down in their correct position, which will save some issues later. So I can switch out this little bottom cap and look at that, the jar's too full to do my trick of leaning the spout up on the edge so I might have to just enjoy those spoils don't leave them for the bees or you might uh, have bees turning into rubber bees so it was two frames and we've got two big jars of honey, look at that, isn't that gorgeous it's enough to last your family for a while. Plenty to share around the neighborhood. They're such incredible honey producers. And uh, like for us, they often store more than they need. And we can share some too. Thanks for tuning in.